So multiple news outlets are reporting that Terence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. have agreed terms for a clash on July 29th this year. Specifically, uh, I'm reading from a TalkSport article and it gives some insight into what those terms were and it says both men are guaranteed to earn eight figures from the fight. So I think I've seen from IFL, the figure I've seen is 10 million each. So they're getting paid the same amount on Showtime pay-per-view. There is also a bi-directional rematch clause, which means the loser, be it be Crawford or Spence, they can trigger the immediate rematch within 30 days of their first fight. And that rematch must happen before the end of 2023. And this next term in particular is the one that caught my eye the most, because I think it's probably the, the deciding or defining term. And that is that Terence Crawford has to sign a two-fight deal with promotional company PBC. So, yeah, I say that's probably the, the defining uh, term just because this we all kind of knew the boxing fraternity that this fight wasn't really going to happen unless Al Heyman had some kind of monopoly over these two as they fight. Because this is the biggest, most meaningful fight at welterweight. And you know what PBC is like with the um, the whole cross the street thing. That's That was really the hold up for this for the past however many years. And it wasn't even like it was hearsay. It was Errol Spence it publicly at the press conferences for for other fights saying if Crawford wants to fight me he's got across the street and look that is BS you know boxing fans we hate stuff like this but if that's what Crawford has to do to make this fight happen then as a selfish boxing fan I say look just do it just bite the bullet but to be fair like at first glance because from what I've seen I don't think this has been signed by either fighter it's just been agreed which is a good sign but it's not final, these are pretty fair um, terms. You know, you're getting paid the same amount. The rematch clause goes both ways. And I, I don't mind this rematch clause because, yeah, you guys know I'm not the biggest fan of immediate rematches, but it does largely depend on how the first fight goes. Um, but the conditions that it has to be triggered within the first 30 days and it has to happen before the end of 2023... It's quite contained that way. So it, it just goes to show that, okay, if an immediate rematch does happen, it doesn't take up too much time. It's not long and drawn out. Not like, um, say, the immediate rematch for Usyk versus Joshua. Because I didn't have a problem with that fight, even though I did quite uh, comfortably pick uh, Alexander Usyk in that second fight. It just It was drawn out for so long. Even I didn't mind the idea of the rematch, it just what, took nearly, nearly, nearly a year. It was like 11 months to come back, to come around. Whereas this, a lot more contained, mm, I can I can accept that. But yeah, if it's if this is what it takes for Terence Crawford to kind of uh, to, to sign that and get this fight done, hey, just do it, man. It's not like he really has that many other options. And the same goes for Spence as well. If they want to be recognised as the best, they have to fight each other. And it doesn't look like Spence is going to leave Al Heyman, PBC anytime soon. So Crawford has to go to him. Um, but yeah, I'm still a little bit... I'm trying to be positive, but boxing fans recently have just been messed around so much that this is one of those where I'll believe it when I see it. And that will be when both guys are in the ring and the first bell's about to go. I'm not going to hold my breath for this one, but I will stay positive. And, you know, it's... It's not definitive yet, but I feel like it's a good start. It's a good start. Um, and I guess we could make some very early predictions. Some people are talking about the age of Terence Crawford and how at 35, you know, he's really got to get a move on. And yeah, I, I understand that sentiment. Personally, assuming this fight goes ahead in July, I'm still picking Crawford. Um, I've said for many years, I just feel that he beats Spence um, from a stylistic perspective. I feel like Crawford has a lot of ability and a lot of, he does a lot in the ring that he doesn't necessarily get credit for. Whereas, and don't take it the wrong way, don't get twisted. Like, I rate Spence. I think he's a fantastic fighter. But I just think Crawford's just a, 
a step ahead, a level above. Uh, and then some guys on the channel who comment regularly, they know who they are. They try to tell me, they say, no, you know, outmatch, you're selling Spence short, he's better than you think. And Spence, I must say, I have um, I have sold him short in the past. I thought Ugas would knock him out, but that was more so just because I didn't have much confidence in Spence's condition following the car crash. But Spence certainly is a remarkable fighter. Uh, fighter I enjoy watching very much, just as much as I enjoy watching Crawford. But just in my head, the way I weigh up the styles, I think Crawford still wins this, uh, even at 35 years old. But that's just my opinion anyway. Let me know what you think of the terms that are being reported for this fight. Uh, are you, like me, positive but still a bit conservative with your excitement? Or are you like, you know what? The wheels are in motion, it's gonna go ahead, you know, it's coming July 29th, or you're in the other end of the spectrum, in uh, the ultimate pessimist saying, no, it's not gonna happen. It's just a, it's an elaborate ruse to keep goes, keep both guys, uh, both of their names in the news. And also, what do you think of the, uh, the fight from a, a practical result perspective? Mm -hmm.